Hi, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Welcome to TikTok's Happy Hour. Happy Hour is our webinar series where TikTok employees talk about their life, work, and personal perspectives. I'm James from the HR team, and I'm very lucky to work very, very closely with Lisa, who leads our small to medium business team here in Dublin at TikTok. Today, we'll be talking about what it's like to work at TikTok and how our SMB team drives impact for the overall business. Hey, Lisa, uh, can you introduce yourself a little bit and tell our audience what attracted you to TikTok in the first place? Hey, James, thanks for having me. This is really exciting. One of my favorite things to do is to talk about our SMB team. So lucky me today. Um, so as you said, my name is Lisa Friedrich and I lead our small medium sized business team here at TikTok. Uh, we look after all of EMEA from our, from our hub here in Dublin. Uh, very candidly, I feel like joining TikTok for me was a once in a career opportunity. Um, to be very candid, the SMB opportunity here is growing so quickly. There is so much for us to do and it feels like you know, our business is just um, a rocket ship that I get to be a part of. And very fortunately, because our SMB team is just so awesome, um, I felt like I couldn't turn it down. Yeah. And rocket ship's a word I hear a lot when, when people are talking about <laughs> SMB, right? So uh, with, our, with our growth. So what is unique about the SMB team and how, how is it driving that growth for the overall business, Lisa? Okay. So, you know, I'm going to be super biased about this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, our team is extraordinary. We are just, you know, surrounded by really smart people generally here at TikTok. Mm -hmm. But I would say that from our building this from the ground up, we have hired just some of the smartest, most innovative people that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Um, and more than that, it's people who want to build and problem solve and love white space to figure things out. I think that is really what makes us so special on our team. We also feel really strongly about our mission, which is helping small, medium-sized businesses to grow and connect with their audiences in this meaningful, authentic way. That's probably even more important now, honestly, coming out of the last crazy two years, or, or maybe we're still in the crazy uh, time, but we just feel like our job is to help our community continue to engage and support these small, medium-sized businesses. And, and it's just an exciting thing to be part of. Yeah, like again, what an awesome impact to be able to help small businesses, medium businesses. So again, we're talking about SMB here. Give us a little bit more of an introduction to, to what that looks like. What, what's, what makes up SMB? What kind of roles do we, we have across our teams? Yeah, so we have so many different opportunities. We really are a true ecosystem here in Dublin, and we have so many different opportunities to help us build, you know, this this impact for the overall TikTok business. Uh, so from our sales side, right, we have account managers and account executives that are helping us work directly with clients and helping them grow their businesses and getting them up and running on the platform. We have a growth, we have a lot of growth in our client services team, which really does our support and answering all these questions and tickets from customers all over our platform from across EMEA. Um, and we have a host of really critical areas that support our sales functions, training, quality assurance, program management, vendor management, marketing, you name it, uh, all here in Dublin and really critical to helping us operate more efficiently as a team. Wow. Yeah. So quite a, quite a wide business is covering off a, a lot, right? So again, lots of opportunities for, for people. So you, you've you been here, what, about 15 months now, right? So what, if you were to look back at those 15 months, what's one of the, the kind of either biggest achievements or an unforgettable project, anything at all that you would like to, you'd like to share with us here today, Lisa? Yeah. 15 months, as we call it, TikTok time. That could be, <laughs> <laughs> it could be longer than 15 months or shorter, depending on the day. Um, I mean, for us, it's just been an incredible experience. There has been so much growth across the business, uh, but especially on our team. When I started at the end of August last year, um, there were six of us, and now we have over 100 people across all different functions, as I've mentioned. And it's just been uh, you know, a really unique experience, unlike anything I've had in my career. I, I felt like I've worked at some pretty amazing places, but this is just exceptional in the talent and the opportunity to make an impact. 
Awesome. I definitely reflective of my experience too, right? Today is actually my, my six months since I since I joined, right? So I passed probation. I got the email it's today. Anniversary. Right? Yeah, that exactly. is a big day. Yeah. So but I would definitely agree. You go you go through a lot in a short time here. Like in the six months I've been here, I've probably done a lot more than I've done in any other business. And I was with them for three plus years. Um, and I think that's a that was a big, big um big one of mine sorry to, to make it about uh, about me there for a second but i uh, just just remembered i seen the email this morning was pretty chuffed but but yeah again growing a business from six employees to a hundred over over a course of a year i can only imagine what that was like being in, in talent myself but thinking thinking back on that what was your your biggest learning what was the biggest kind of challenge or growth that you've seen across that that learning yeah that's a great question i mean and you've seen this firsthand being part of our smb team right talent acquisition hr is is huge for us um, I mean, I, I think there's been a couple of things that we have learned, which is, you know, the first, we want to hire people who want to have an impact and, and want the white space to test and do new things, right? If, if you're more comfortable in a structured, really structured environment, this might not be the best place for you because we have so much opportunity to build and create things from the ground up. And I think it's really important that not only do we hire people who want to do that, but we give them the space to do it and that we we have that sort of tolerance to test and iterate and make things better and and really um, create that infrastructure for the business. Um, the other thing that I think we've learned is that we need to support people within our ecosystem. So we have this incredible talent. And just because you start in one role doesn't mean that that's where you want to be for the rest of your career. Or you want new experiences. And we just feel like we offer that um, as we've grown our organization. We've been able to see that mobility across sales teams, people moving from sales to client services, people moving from IC roles to leadership roles. I think that's just a really important thing that as we think about bringing new team members on, we're thinking about the bigger picture and where they sit generally within our organization, not in that role at that time, it's a great fit, but we definitely want to make sure that we're supporting people through the growth of their career because we have so much opportunity and so much ability to do that within our SMB team. Yeah. So again, sounds great, right? So you've been going for about a year and you already have people moving around and growing and developing out their roles. So as, as a leader, how are you supporting that? You've mentioned we, we are supporting it, but, but how are we doing it, Lisa? Yeah, I'll ask you this question back here in a little bit. <laughs> See, how are we doing, James? No, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think for me, I believe that our leaders, our leadership team with an SMB has an obligation to set clear expectations about where we see the business going, that we build an environment where people are empowered to make decisions. We trust them to do the right thing when they know what direction we're all, we all row in the right direction, they can make those choices. And we foster an atmosphere where we have communication and transparency. They feel like we can hear different ideas. And then honestly, we get out of the way. <laughs> That's what I can do as a leader, right? I can provide an opportunity for people to make sure that they are heard and that people feel comfortable and empowered to make those decisions. But then we just want to support them to do those things and, and not uh, micromanage too much because frankly, we have way too much to do here to, to even entertain that kind of, that kind of culture. Yeah. And again, I know you mentioned before about the trust, about the hiring great people, getting out of their way, giving them, giving them that trust. And I've obviously seen it myself um, internally when I've been working with some of the managers hiring that their roles have grown over the course of eight months. Gustavo is a good, a, a good um, example here where his role has literally grown two or three times since he's joined us. Uh, other, uh, some of our team leads who have come in to lead our kind of doc markets have taken on other markets as we're growing and scaling into those markets. Um, so yeah, I think we are definitely putting them into a position to be a success, uh, which is obviously part of our, our kind of growth strategies, right? It is quick, which means people are jumping in. And back to your earlier thing about the builder mindset, I think the people who have a builder mindset want to jump in. And we've seen that with some of our, our team leads and some of some of our people um, who have joined us. So again, some some really kind of cool growth there. So and we, I mean, we support people through mm -hmm. all kinds of other programs, right? Like even in their existing roles, we have a, a, a huge, you know, talent development initiative mm -hmm. to make sure that people are getting access to training and the different skill sets that they might want to learn. And, you know, we, we have, um, you know, we do discovery insights for everyone on our team. So we see kind of the different uh, balance of characteristics. So we make sure that we're not hiring all the same person every mm -hmm. time. I mean, we really do try to um, 
you know, as a leadership team, we support them with some values and culture, but also as a team, I mean, you know this better than me, the HR team does all kinds of things to make sure that we have, you know, coaching sessions and office hours and giving people that opportunity to ask those questions and and just even figuring out what they want to do next. Um, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. So everybody's trying to figure <laughs> that out <laughs> for yeah. sure. Agree. And again, for me and TA, it's all about putting people in the right seats to be a success, right? So, and, and again, the diversity of thought is, is just as important. If you don't mind me putting you on the spot, Lisa, you, I'm assuming you did the Discovery Insights. What, what was your color mix? What, what, was your, <laughs> what was your main ones? Yeah, I can honestly say I, I am a, a very strong red in the color wheel. I don't think that would be a surprise to anyone um, with, a, with a yellow as a secondary. So bossy and friendly. Is that a nice combination? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a that is a very interesting one. I'm I'm red and blue, right? So I'm direct and and then data analytical focused, right? So, um, but interestingly, on the opposite side, you know how you do the conscious and subconscious. Subconsciously, I'm I'm blue and red, which makes sense because I do think for my role, it, I'm in, in an extroverted role, meaning I have to dial up that red energy to to do yeah. my job to to a good degree. Um, but thanks for 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 answering on the spot, right? Uh, it's it's an interesting. One. No, it yeah. was it's it's a good it's a good balance. We have some good greens and some a lot of yellows and so it's actually really nice to see us across the spectrum of the wheel and that we nobody needs to hire a lot of me we definitely need some complimentary um and some balance there so i think we've done a pretty good job uh, thanks yeah. to the efforts of our incredible ta team yeah and again it's just another element of diversity and inclusion right like it's it's not just about where where people come from or what their backgrounds are it's about their personalities and everything so we know diversity and inclusion is important in, in the market right now is extremely important to us. How do you champion that across your team and across your organization, Lisa? Well, I feel pretty strongly that diversity is important. Fortunately, it's in the DNA of, of TikTok and our platform, but also just by nature of us supporting, you know, Europe, Middle East, Africa from Dublin, right? So having those language skills and that cultural perspective, that, that's natural and kind of built in mm -hmm. into the infrastructure that we have. But we, then we've made a conscious decision to make sure that we hire people from different companies and from different backgrounds and with different perspectives and that we're not all thinking about things in the same way. Um, I'm not Irish, as you've probably gathered. Um, so just, you know, my perspective is very different from someone who grew up in a different part of Europe or a different part of the Middle East or Africa or Central Europe. I think that that's really helpful for us and it's healthy for us to have that kind of diversity of thought and perspective. It makes mm -hmm. us better. The other piece that I feel pretty strongly about is gender equality. And I feel like having female leaders, um, you know, having that kind of representation, not to say that it's all female leadership, but I really think having that balance of 50-50 gender equality across our leadership team and across our organization is really important that we're demonstrating that um, to people who are early in their careers or wherever you are, or what stage, I just feel feel like that's been something we've been very conscious about and mm -hmm. having that leadership uh, diversity, uh, especially when it comes to gender. So f for me, those are kind of the things that we've we've built in uh, into that criteria and hiring. And I think we've we're all better for it. Yeah. And again, from some Sony partners very close to the business, I would I would agree. And I think we're doing it in a, in a very good and, pro and again, proactive way. Back to your, your point earlier about joining TikTok, like it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You don't want to let just you joining here and then turning around and saying, okay, we're just going to do what everybody else did. And um, being able to not inherit the the issues that we have in our markets is, I think, really, really good. Uh, obviously, we have the we have similar to other organizations. We have employee resource groups. We have all of these other kind of um, kind of groups in, in in place. And I love that they're usually run like by people's passions. Like it's not a, a top down type of initiative that's HR push or leadership pushed. It's actually the people in our business are like, hey, let's let's do this. Um, I know a lot of people who are on this uh, won't actually know what Lark is, but that's one of our internal tools here. And we have so many Lark groups that are <laughs> people's passions across everything. And that touches everything from, from DNI to Marvel movies. And I think we're extremely lucky in that way that we have a very open organization with people just to speak to each other. And I think it comes back to a lot of our values of just trying to be a company that in inspires joy, right? Um, which again, I, I really like. Um, so, and I'm sure you do too, Lisa. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm one of the sponsors for the women at TikTok Europe group. And I can honestly say we have diversity even in that group. And just to see that commitment from a company is 
been really uh, inspiring for me. Yeah. And again, it all, it all feeds into the culture of an organization, right? And, and this organization is, is still pretty young, right? So how do you like that team culture here? And especially in the SMB where you're going to be a main part of it, but also from a, a wider TikTok lens, how are you enjoying the, the culture and how would you describe it for us? Well, I think generally the TikTok culture, I mean, we we really try to align with our platform, right? And, and the, the mission of that creative, you know, inspiring creativity and bringing joy to people. But Within SMB, I'm really proud of the culture that we've created. I think, um, look, we, <laughs> the pace of change here is intense. We, we are constantly growing and adapting and moving. And, and I think, you know, for us, we have a team that thrives in that. It doesn't mean that it doesn't get frustrating sometimes because we're human, but you know, to wake up every day and to be inspired and motivated about the opportunity and the potential and the things that, you know, you walk into a meeting and a decision is made and something happens, that that is really unique. Um, and I feel like just the growth that we've seen across our team and to be able to grow the team from six to a hundred plus people and still be able to maintain those values has been I think a real testament to how strongly we feel about that culture and maintaining that regardless of the size of the team. Um, I also think that just having that space to be innovative, mm -hmm. I think makes us really unique uh, in the market that we, we really have impact. Um, our teams do, they have their empowered to make decisions. And I've talked to candidates in interviews and when they ask me, you know, really, what do I love the most? I say, look, there is white space here. You can build something from the ground up. We don't have all the answers. And for me, that's a place that I want to be. Um, and I think for those of us who are those kind of builders, um, I keep thinking of the Lego movie. Clearly, I have children <laughs> thinking of like Emmett in the Lego movie, the builder. Um, but if you're a builder, I think this is this is really uh, an amazing place for you to be because there is so much opportunity to do that. Yeah. And again, from from my interactions with people interviewing for SMB, it's one of the big things that once we start talking about it, it's it's the thing that draws them to jo joining TikTok. Like, hey, I can build there. I can have impact. I'm not joining a, a business that that's been going 20 years who, that has everything in place. Uh, and again, it, it's very interesting to me because I think one of the big misconceptions when I do speak to people is because such our brand awareness is, is so strong. Like if you think of the UEFA football, if you think of where you see our name everywhere, you wouldn't think that that business is three years old, right? You would think it's much, much older. So when I'm speaking to people, the misconception is that everything in TikTok is already built and I'm just going to come in and be a cog in a wheel. What about you, Lisa? What kind of misconceptions do you see when you're having conversations with people? Yeah, I think, you know, I think there's mis uh, misconceptions about the platform. I think that comes up a lot, right? Where people mm -hmm. think, you know, we're, we have dancing videos and like, that's really what TikTok is. And, and I think for me, it's just talking about the bigger vision and the bigger community that we have. And so when we start talking about us as an entertainment platform and us, you know, what, what our community brings to entrepreneurs and connecting them in a way, in this really authentic way, which I think is unique, mm -hmm. you know, today in the digital world, that it doesn't have to be perfectly polished. And that when we see SMB owners and entrepreneurs telling their story, that is really powerful. Um, and our platform rallies to support those people. And so I feel like that is something that's really important that we talk about in terms of our bigger mission for TikTok. And then I think for the team, you know, for me, it's about work-life integration. I think there is, uh, with all startups, there's a there's an idea that you're working nonstop 24 seven, and that's just not true. I mean, we really, I don't want anyone to get burned out. First of all, I think that's really important. I have a life outside of TikTok. I have three kids, so I like to joke. I think you've heard me say this, that like I go to my second job <laughs> at the end of the day to make dinner and do things with my family and on the weekends. So, I mean, I think that's important. That we value that space and give people that opportunity to find the integration that works for them. Um, so, you know, when I talk to candidates that are in interviews, that's what we talk about. We talk about we hire smart people, we trust them to do their jobs, and we give them space to find that integration that works best for them. And, and I think that's how we all thrive and grow as a team. 
Yeah. And again, it's, it's weird when you speak to people in the business, right? So for me, that's it's so reflective of my own experience. Like I have a two and a half year old, I do the crash drop off and the crash picks up pickups. And again, I, I think I'm going to steal your phrase of, of work life integration, because it's not about that balance anymore. I think it's a it's quite an, an, an old way of thinking of work, right? We do what we love. We're passionate about it. So therefore, it's a part of our life. It's it's not separated. And again, I have no problem me, like having message, messages coming in from my team leads later in the evenings and, and responding to those. I always say about, about TikTok, it's not a, it's not an, um, a business about presenteeism. It's not about nine to it's not about nine to six at all. It really is about outputs and how we're performing. Uh, as a very heavily performance based industry in sales and in media, it is all about that. So I do think for me, that's what what I love about the organization too. So so, uh, and I think from conversations I have in the market with people, that's what they want too. They, they want that flexibility to be able to live their lives, especially after the last two years that we've seen where you do want to just you want to log off for two hours and go for a walk in the middle of the day because you just want to get that headspace. And having an organization that you feel gives you that opportunity, I think is, yeah. is extremely important right now. I mean, well, and we have to trust the smart, innovative rock stars that we have on the team. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's really critical for us. I would also say that I think, I don't think it's a misconception, but I think any job will ask you for as much as you can give it, right? Mm -hmm. And so as we support our teammates and our colleagues to do what they need to do for their families and for their life and for their mental health, <laughs> that's really important because that makes them better, a better team player to come back mm -hmm. on the field when they're ready and like do what we need them to do. So. Um, clearly, I have rugby on the brain here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the heels of uh, in, the, in between the uh, the game on on Saturday and now another game uh, this weekend. But yeah, I mean, I think those are really important things. We want people to want to come to work, and I really believe that. You know, we tell our team, you know, people want to feel heard, they want to feel appreciated, and they want to feel like they're making an impact. Like this mm -hmm. is the place that they want to be. Yeah, and again. This is the place they want to be. We're talking about hiring rock stars and people who are going to come in and be rock stars. When you're interviewing Lisa, what are what are the qualities that you're looking for in in the candidates you're speaking to? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I mean, I look for examples of builders and problem solvers. Um, back to my Emmett Lego example, I look for people who have found opportunities to you know make something better in their current company or a previous role. They've helped a client in an innovative way. They didn't assume that their manager had the answer because I know I don't have all the answers. So we need people who can sort of make that jump and figure things out, even if it's not right the first time, that's okay. But mm -hmm. finding that iteration and sort of that tenacity to figure things out, um, I think that's really important. Agility is what I call it, that you can adjust to change and you can flex to uncertainty without you know, getting flustered by that. I think, you know, for me, I thrive in organizing chaos. I know that about myself. I like to take things that are chaotic and I put some structure to them. And, and that gives me some feeling of accomplishment in my professional life. And I think finding people who can do that adjustment, knowing that, you know, TikTok is always going to be changing and evolving and growing. And if you thrive in that, then I think you can do really well here. Um, and last, but definitely not least, is humility. Mm -hmm. I, I see our organization, especially in SMB, is relatively flat. So it's it's great that I can say I lead the SMB team, but I don't do that alone. And there's a lot of people and a lot of people in our organization that influence that and have a say and do all this really amazing work uh, across our team. And so I feel like when we think about that is that we're all in this together. Nobody has all the answers. We we do our best work when we put our egos aside and we collaborate to, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. I think that's really important for us. So those three values to me are things that I really hone in on in candidates. And I'm proud to say that thus far we've gotten it pretty right, given the, the culture and just kind of the incredible performance of our team so far. Perfect. And I'm really glad you said that because, again, I interview for you all the time. So there are things that I'm looking for in a lot of our people. It would have been strange if we were if you were telling me some stuff I'd have been taking notes <laughs> going, oh, oh, oh. Um, I've been getting this wrong, especially after a hundred plus hires across an organization. Um, so 
it's again that's the qualities they have to show we've talked earlier about the the kind of breadth of of opportunities across smb for you what are the kind of key roles that we will be looking for 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 people to join us in the next couple of weeks and months and going into 2022 yeah, I mean, I think we need, you know, multi-language speakers in a number of roles, uh, German, French, Dutch, Russian, Polish, you name it. You probably know the list even better than me. But those are some, you know, again, that diversity and perspective, we support all of EMEA from Dublin. So just having those language skills and those really talented people who can you know, I'm an English only speaker, so I'm always amazed at people who can speak two, three, four languages, mm -hmm. just a different level of, of intelligence. So I think that's really important for us to hire those skill sets. Also, we're looking to hire in our marketing teams, in our product marketing teams, in our sales teams, um, in our client services team to help kind of with our support functions. Um, there's a lot of roles on the career site, which you know better than me. So I think um, that full list is there, but we have a lot of priorities that we're looking to hire in 2022. Yeah, and I think it's going to be really, again, it's really exciting. And back to one of your earlier points, right? Of we're not looking for people from just one business. Like I think of some of the people we've hired since I've been here in, in the last six months, right? We've had we've had people from agencies. We've had people from from direct um, platforms. We've had people from from vendors. We've had people from from kind of everywhere, right? And I think that's really good. Some of them already based in Dublin. Some of them moving over to Dublin specifically for this opportunity, which we're obviously extremely humbled by that people from all across the EMEA region are, are happy to relocate to Dublin and come work for us. So, um, so yeah. And again, a little bit of a plug from from my side. Feel free to reach out if you if you want to chat about any of those roles. Um, so yeah, so so near one of our last questions here, Lisa. Um, if you were to describe Team TikTok in one word, what would that one word be? Just one word. Just oh, just the one. one. I think. I mean, extraordinary, right? It's extraordinary. It's definitely just a, a really special, amazing place. So I think by definition, that's extraordinary. Yeah. And again, you, I, I would add so many words to it if we were given. If we were given <laughs> that was, we were a, given that was a tough one, honestly. And again, I have so much, I just, our SMB team, I feel like is really, really special. So while TikTok is an incredible place, I think um, I feel exceptionally grateful to be in Dublin working on the SMB EMEA team. And um, I just, I, I can't, I can't brag about our team enough. So I will, I know we have to end this at some point, so I won't belabor the point, but it's really, uh, I'm really proud to be part of that team. Yeah. And again, me too, right? I know I'm kind of beside the team and working very, very close with you, but I always feel like with SMB, I'm kind of working with, with an Olympic standard team that we have some of the best people in the world working in our teams, helping us, uh, us grow our, our, our business. Um, I'm very lucky that I get to speak to a lot of those people for the first time about SMB, about TikTok. Um, again, back to that whole feel humble that the, the people are want to join us but they, they see the opportunity here lisa i want to thank you a lot for taking the time out to have have this conversation i know you're you've got a very busy schedule as we just said but glad we could integrate this into the into that um it has been uh, great speaking to you we appreciate all of the insights and for any of you uh, tuning in thank you for spending time with us too if you want to know more about smb or TikTok, we will have more of these kind of sessions but do feel free to reach out to me too and um, to have conversations directly about our roles and if you're in interested in joining TikTok at a at a wider scale, look at our careers.tiktok.com. Um, um, and it's been fantastic talking to you all. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks. And then we do we sing and dance because we're TikTok? Is that one we do? <laughs>